what's going on guys, Mike from The Rap Collectors, and today I'm going to be doing a small little video on my N64 collection because it's really small. That's why it's going to be a short little video. A collection that I've amassed over the last four years. I've not really gone solely for the N64. As you know, I'm a, more of a Dreamcast collector and once the Dreamcast collection is basically completed, I'm going for the N64 complete set just because I've already have two of the bigger hitters on the on the console. So for me, it would be a little bit of an easier way of getting a complete set because I got two of those already knocked out. And I'll get into a story as to why and how I got those games. So this started off with GoldenEye. Countless hours have been gone into this game. Years and years, I haven't played it since. But I remember when I was in high school, when this game first came out, we used to finish high school and go to a buddy's house who had an N64, one of the fortunate people that had an N64. And we were going between this and wrestling with WCW versus NWO. Fights would break out. It was so much fun. There was no odd job, which you couldn't do. It was slappers only sometimes we used to actually play. And we were just sitting on the couch, you know, six or seven guys just waiting for our turn on the four player controller ports of, of the N64. It was so much fun. If you guys haven't played it, do yourself a favor and play it. But I highly doubt there's many of you that haven't played it at this point in time. Such a great game. Rare really knocked this one out of the park when it came to the multiplayer aspect of this game. 1080 snowboarding. I play this a lot as of late just because it's winter here and this is a lot of fun, going down the hill and trying to do as many tricks as you possibly can. Speed times and going down there really fast. A lot of great times and great memories happened with this game. It was it was one of those, uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, extreme sports were the thing of the, you know, the future. It was something that you could really sink your teeth into. A lot of points and bragging to your friends, oh, I scored this amount of points on this half pipe and unlocking certain characters. So extreme sports were a lot of fun back then in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s. Such a great game. All-Star Tennis, I picked this up on the super cheap. So uh, realistically playing this is not something that I'm aspiring to play. I don't know if it's any good. So if you guys know, let, let me know in the comments down below. But something that better than nothing, right? If you're going to go in for a complete set, you got to pick up all the games. Next up, Big Mountain 2000. This is, I think, another snowboarding game. I never really played it. I picked this up on the super cheap as well. Next up, it's... Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I keep it in a dust sleeve. It's a Nintendo purposed dust sleeve. It's a non-branded Nintendo dust sleeve that I actually purposed into a N64 dust case for it. As you know, that uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day is uh, a you know not a rare title, but it's a game that has gone up there in price. And I got this a long time ago on the super cheap. I think I played maybe like 20 bucks for it. It's a, it's a great little game. If you guys haven't played it, Rare really knocked it out of the park with this game. A lot of 3D platforming. And if you guys haven't played it much 3D platforming, a lot of it was done really, really well on the N64. Some of the games don't hold up graphic wise to this day, but this was a great game and really crude if you don't know. It's a, it's a really good game. Next up, it's another game that's actually in this dust sleeve. And this is a Sculptor's Cut. I picked this up with Danny maybe three years ago. We went to a Goodwill and the story was, uh, or story is, I walked into the Goodwill and I saw four games on the shelf and I wasn't really into them, but because I saw one of the four was displayed, it was Super Mario 64. So I was like, if anything, I'm just going to grab this one. Usually when you go into any store, it's kind of a cheap or a knockoff of really garbage games, you know, sports games. So when I saw Mario 64, so I'm, I decided I'm going to at least pick this up. So when I asked the girl, can I see those games? She brought them to me, one being Super Mario 64. Great, I'm already sold on that one. Next being was Mortal Kombat 4. Okay, you know what, not too bad. Put that in the pile as well. Next was Duke Nukem Zero Hour. Again, another good title. You don't see enough, no sports as of yet. And last but not least was Sculptor's Cut. And when I grabbed this, I, I swear to God, my heart jumped. I was shaking. I had to look at my collector app if this was the rare game. I wasn't really sure because I know that there's two Clay Fighters, but I didn't know which one was the rare one. And when I saw it, I'm like, this this can't be it. So I, I grabbed it. I put it back at the, underneath the bottom of the pile. She was charging me $2.50 each. I don't know if you guys could see that. It was $5.05, but it was a half price day. It still got the Blockbuster sticker on the back of it. And I was trembling when I grabbed this. I was so... So happy that I grabbed it. it. Immediately jumped my list of N64 completion, uh, what I should go for as far as a completion total. Because this game, like I said, was one of the games that was the rarest title on the console. So going for a complete set would be a no-brainer since I already knocked this out of the park right off the bat. So this was a great little addition, a little sne a sleeper that I was 
shaking when I grabbed. This was another one of the ones that I grabbed. As you can see, it's 505 there. Duke Nukem Zero Hour. It's a little nice little title and nice little addition to the complete collection. ECW Hardcore Revolution. It's a wrestling game, and from what I remember, it's not one of the best ones. I know that the THQ knocked those ones out of the park when it came to wrestling games, and this was trying to cash into the wrestling craze that it was. There was actually a few WCW or WWF games that they tried to jump that bandwagon as far as wrestling craze that was going on back then. And this was another one that Acclaim made and wasn't very good. This is another racing game, much like F-Zero, you're racing down really, really fast at extreme speeds and it's a really nice little game. The label's really, really good shape. Knife Edge Nose Gunner, Knuckle Kings 2000. I played the hell out of this on the PlayStation. I like this game a lot. It was just going for swing for haymakers and knocking the people out as quickly as possible. Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. What can't be said about Majora's Mask that can't be said about Ocarina of Time. Two great games. Ocarina of Time I spent a lot more time in than this. I never really cleared uh, Majora's Mask. I cleared this a few times. I love both of these games no matter what. I have to actually go back and try to clear this throughout. I know there's a lot of methods of playing both of these as of now, some on the 3DS and the eShop. I wanted to play on the original console and go through all that nostalgia that we actually had when we played these on the original console. So those are really nice little additions on that collection. Madden 2000, Mario Tennis, a great co-op game to play on the couch with the family, with the friends. It's it's a nice little addition. MLB featuring Ken Griffey Jr., another great game, co-op game, two players on the, on the couch, great game. Mortal Kombat 4, as you guys remember the story of the Clay Fighter, this was one of the additions to that. NBA Courtside, I believe this was a launch title. It was a great game when it first came out. NBA Hang Time, this was a knockoff of NBA Jam. You know, it's a, kind of an extreme type of basketball game. And Midway made a lot of those extreme games that were really fun on the couch with co-op and forget the rules and go out and just score as many points as, as, as possible. So this was a nice little game. NFL Quarterback Club 2000, NHL 99. I remember we used to play this a lot. At a friend's house, we used to go to his garage. He had a TV and an N64 in the garage. And we used to play this like crazy. He was really good at it, and he actually destroyed us a lot in this game. He created his own team, and we used to actually play with stock teams. And when you're playing against somebody who actually created their team with 99s, you're not really beating them. Uh, great game. Catchphrases on, as the, the commentators were really, really good. It were a lot of fun playing played on that. Star Fox 64, another great game. Playing this and clearing this was uh, was a little feat in itself. I remember playing this a lot and trying to get uh, the little as quickly as possible and try to find those little uh, added uh, side bonuses to actually completing the, the levels and, and doing stuff faster or trying to get missions that were uh, would unlock different uh, paths or branches to it. It was a nice little game, great little game that Nintendo made. This is what made me fall in love with the N64, Super Mario 64. With Mario Odyssey coming out, you could see the, the comparison from Mario Odyssey to the Mario 64, the nice little nods that they've done in the game. And not for anything, even Mario Galaxy, the Odyssey actually did a few little nods in into the Galaxy's uh, court. There were great games, both of them, uh, Super Mario 64 and Galaxy, and Odyssey, I paid homage to both of those games and Mario 64 stands out as one of my favorite ones. Odyssey's up there and Galaxy, I think it would be 64, Galaxy and then Odyssey. Odyssey being a great game, don't get me wrong, but when you played the original and then you play something that was something that added a little bit of elements and gameplay that Galaxy did and then you implement them both into Odyssey, I can't beat the original and I really, really did love this game. Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey, a nice little game, extreme hockey game. It's kind of like NHL hits, you guys, if you guys remember, and NHL 99, a combination of two. Midway, again, making this game was so much fun. WCW Revenge and WCW World Tour. These were two of the games that we used to play at my friend's house. We used to play a lot at my friend's house with GoldenEye, but these two games actually Playing four player on this, it was so much fun. We used to play a lot of World Tour first. Revenge came after the fact, he ended up getting it afterwards. But World Tour is what we ended up playing. It was so much fun. WrestleMania 2000, another game THQ made and they knocked it out of the park. But this time with WWF or WWE wrestlers, it was a great, great game. Playing as The Rock, playing as Stone Cold. Because I remember playing as WCW, you always wanted to play as 
WWF re- uh, characters. You would actually even try to create WWF characters in WCW with their limited creator wrestler. Great game nonetheless, unbelievable. WWF Attitude and WWF Warzone. These were games that were made by Acclaim and they were uh, not very good. I, I remember Warzone, WWF Attitude, I never played, but Warzone, I remember waiting and waiting for this game to come out and you know the seeing the realistic graphics and seeing stone cold trying to do stunners and all that and then when you get into the control scheme of it i absolutely hated it i didn't enjoy it at all i i preferred the other wwf games that thq made and you know the next up being probably one of the greatest wrestling games uh bar none even comparison to some of the wrestling games that you have nowadays especially with wwf 2k18 wwf no mercy was a game that took it to another level you could create everything from the wrestler to your entrance to your move sets it was such a great game it was something that you know when you came to a friend's house and you popped this in and you had you create a wrestler and you tried to use a stock wrestler it wasn't even fair sometimes when you would go in there because you had so many power moves in comparison to some of the guys that were stock moves if you're gonna play no custom wrestlers and if you did you let your friend create his custom wrestler and you can go back and forth and try to create a title match with each created wrestler such a great game but if you guys haven't played that do yourself a favor and play it these are my little n64 collection i do still love the n64 one of my second favorite consoles just behind the dreamcast let me know what you guys think down below in the comments thanks guys